you're able to do all those things that make you happy. And the next, you are in a hospital bed as a result of a spinal cord injury. You listen in disbelief to the doctors telling you, you will never be able to move your legs again. You will never be able to walk again. This is the harsh reality of almost 6,000 individuals every year in the United States alone. They are newly diagnosed with a motor complete spinal cord injury, meaning they have no movement below the level of injury, all unable to move their legs, some unable to move both arms and legs. When you realize that more than half of the spinal cord injuries occur in individuals between the ages of 16 and 30, and that they will be wheelchair bound for the rest of their lives, the impact becomes a lot more daunting. These individuals moved to Louisville, not for the bourbon, <laughs> not for the horse racing, but because they deep inside did not believe in the definition of never. They had something to contribute to the spinal cord injury community. They believed that maybe one day their lives would change again. There has been a lot of research done on spinal cord injury and rehabilitation, both in animal and human models, paving the way for scientists to try combination of therapies to harness the capacity of the spinal cord. Until now, None have been successful at restoring function of, after a motor complete spinal cord injury or at eradicating the word never from the doctor's vocabulary. We at the University of Louisville and Fraser Rehab Institute set out to do a proof of principle study combining epidural simulation and locomotor training. We implant an electrode array in the lower spinal cord where their circuitry for walking and standing is located. We stimulate the spinal cord and retrain individuals to stand and step. Rob was our first individual implanted, and we first focused his training on standing. We were moving down our scientific path, and one day, now, I have to tell you, this was one of the most boring assessments ever. We go down the list of combinations of electrodes, we we'll look at motor responses, and all that Rob had to do was lay there quietly. Going down a list of combinations, and we hear whispers. My first reaction was, we're trying to do science here. Can we save this conversation for later? Rebecca says, he can move his toe. I'm thinking, it must be the stimulation oh. moving his toe. Rob is paralyzed, remember? He can't move. Well, Rob decided to show us. Toe up, toe down, toe up, toe down. And there it was, the big toe wiggling on command. After a lot of scientific discussion as to how this was possible, we designed a new experiment to test these unexpected results. And this is what happened the next day. Left toe up, left toe down, left leg up, left leg down, left leg up, Left leg down, left leg up, left leg down, left toe up, left toe down. It was no longer a simple toe wiggle. We got skeptical. Why him? Why now? Rob has sensation. So maybe the many months of simulation and stand training had regenerated some of the sensory fibers and promoted regeneration and movement. 
Yes, that is it. That is our new hypothesis. Meet Kent, our second individual implanted. He was a motor complete, sensory complete, meaning no movement or sensation below the level of injury. We're thinking, we are brilliant. We are going to test someone with no sensation before they start training to prove our new hypothesis. This is what happened the first day. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Awesome. The last one finally figured out, like I figured out. You want to try more? I figured out the motion that I needed to think of. Okay. Uh, the muscle harness for the left leg. Do you want to it? It's hard to um, remember how to do that. So you want me to stop? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As we're fixing the equipment, he was, he wants to make sure it was not a fluke. Watch his face. Mom is crying out of camera view. We were wrong again. Training wasn't a factor. Sensation wasn't a factor. This was proof that the spinal cord remains intact above and below the level of injury. And when provided with the right excitability level, it can integrate signals from the brain coming down past the injury through the very few fibers remaining. And the spinal cord can generate movement. This was the moment that changed the face of spinal cord injury for me. It opened the door to new possibilities. Although the leg movements and toe wiggles were an unexpected and life-changing result, our goal was to stand and step. The question remained, can, this, can we train the spinal cord to do more complex tasks? We first focus our training and standing, and our results were encouraging. Although we observed something peculiar, every new person implanted was doing better than the one before. It was clear we were still learning, but now we were attentive to the lessons taught by our research participants, and it was paying off. But then, when we trained the same individuals to step, something was missing. Walking is automatic for you, correct? Then it makes sense that our training strategy was driven by the knowledge that the spinal cord resp responds to sensory cues from the trainers and the environment, and with intense repetition and practice, we would encourage relearning. Training revolved around trainers providing the spinal cord with sensory cues and research participants being passive recipients. Our results were dismal. Rob, Kent, Drew, Dustin all completed the step training and we had gotten nowhere. Doubts were entering our mind again. What if this is not possible? What if we do not have the right technology? What if walking will remain a never? One night in question was the order of training, stand and step, results in good standing, no stepping. What if we switched the order, step and stand? Animal research had taught us that the order was important. Wait, we can't switch the order. What if stepping is not possible, and then we do not get standing because we did that second? The toe wiggle had eliminated all preconceptions. We had to look harder. We had to look in unexpected places. We switched our training strategy. We train to stand and step on the same day. We train more intensively. We train with purpose. The research participants were no longer passive recipients of therapy. 
They were trying to take each step during the hour session. After all, they could move their legs. Integrating intent with training had not been done before. It defied the automaticity theory, but it was an obvious next step. No pun intended. <laughs> Our new trainings, you have to uh, toe up became the most used words in our vocabulary. You have to bring your toes up as you swing your leg through. Otherwise, you drag your foot. Now, this is what happens when you drag your foot one too many times. Our training strategy was paying off. Toes were starting to come up. The legs started swing through. After a little more practice, we saw full sense. Then it just became a competition for the trainers to see who would get up from the chair first and stay up the longest. You don't need me anymore was the underlying message. But the days were adding up and we were stuck at single leg stepping. They think of the right leg, the right leg steps without assistance. They think of the left leg, the left leg steps without assistance. They think of both legs, their best leg steps without assistance. There's always a best leg. Is this the end of the road? Why can't we figure this out? What if we train their best side so much that it becomes automatic? Then it became easier. It became effortless. And we made room for that stubborn side. The building blocks were coming together, and it was a powerful revelation. One day, Jeff told his trainers, I think I can do it. Let me try this next step. Right, his best side. Then left. Yes, there it was. From that point, there was no turning back. Kelly had been working over ground for a while, but could not get her left leg through without buckling on the right. One day, it just she did not need us anymore. <laughs> Emotions took over. She was whole again. Never became a distant memory. What about standing, you ask? Just as good as before, if not even better. We found the key to unlocking the spinal cord's intrinsic capacity for relearning. It is time to advance this knowledge and remove never from our vocabulary. <laughs>